All righty, so you're getting leads. All right, so the first thing you have to do is pick up the phone. So in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the things that you are going to do and say when you're communicating via your phone in that very first communication. Really key, because there's a good chance you're gonna be able to convert this thing if you do what I tell you to do. And guess what? Some of this can actually be automated. So let's get on to it. This is the first step of my five-step plan. And if you haven't watched that video I've done yet, make sure that you watch it. It is here and I'll be make sure I'll put a, a link down into the video um, description, but you wanna make sure you're watching the five steps. This is step number one. Let's go do it. Step one, the phone call and the text. So I wanna make sure you're clear. If you don't pick up the phone, you know, you're going to lose opportunities and it's, it's the speed to lead thing, right? So you can see how many attempts it takes really to get a hold of people, right? And the amount of, the faster you communicate with people, the better off you're going to be, right? So, because what are they thinking of right now when they sign up online? They're thinking of real estate. If you wait even 10 minutes, they're in the bathroom, they're back to work, they're at the grocery store, they're yelling at their kids they're doing something else, but they're not thinking real estate. So if you wait, you're losing an opportunity. And so when you make these calls, the things that you get out of this, you know, so 80% of failure in sales is one's first year can be contributed to call reluctance. So keep that number in mind. 80% is contributed to call reluctance. And that's too bad because it's the easiest thing we do. We have our phones on us all day long, right? And so if you go back to what I was saying, you're getting all these leads and they're all similar leads. It's really easy to just pick up the phone and say the same thing over and over and over again. It's the exact same thing you're gonna to say to everybody. Makes it easy, right? 40% of declining sales in veterans is due to call reluctance. So I say veterans, we're talking veteran real estate agents, right? It's due to call reluctance. So we just get tired, right? And we're kind of over it. We're, you know, after doing this for a while, I don't blame you. I don't blame you one single bit, okay? Um, all right. Prospects are 21 more times likely to purchase when contacted in the first five minutes. Think about that one. And 89% of people prefer text to phone call. So when we say contacted, it doesn't always have to be by phone, right? And so the good thing is, is your text can be automated. But what are you saying in that text? That is key, right? Here's my biggest beef. And I'm going to talk about this a few times. A call to action is not let me know when you're ready. That is not a call to action. A call to action is simply a question and an open-ended one if you can get it that way. Because ideally, if you're going to get a yes or no, they're going to slam you down pretty hard, right? So you want a question. Every email you send, every text you send. Okay, so 89% of people prefer the text, so why not use it? Years ago, I would say don't do it, but now I do because obviously it's really, really key. But... So we're saying SMS marketing stats for 2021. So 98% of results of the U.S. have a mobile phone. These are just things you should know. By 2023, it's forecasted that 8.2 billion people worldwide will use their phones. The SMS marketing, which is texting, is huge, right? It's a huge business. I know because I have to pay those bills now in my CRM. It's expensive. 95% um, of test messages are read, which is really key, right? And 90% of customers prefer to get these. This says 90%, very close. 48% of consumers prefer uh, direct communication from texting, right? And then the top industry, guess what? It, who's utilizing text is the real estate industry. However, unfortunately, if you're like me, you're getting a lot of that crap from these wholesalers and, you know, are you sick of that? I'm so sick of that. I get calls and, you know, people calling me and say, oh, or do you have any listings on the market or pre-listing? Do you guys all getting that? That's oh, a pain, but it is what it is. Uh, so yes, text is huge, but do not over text. Okay. I warn you right now, do not over text because if you do, that's the quickest way to lose a client. So you've got to be, you walk this really fine line because you don't want to overdo it. And you certainly aren't going to do this legally. You get in trouble really if people don't opt in. And we're going to talk about that. People really need to opt in. So if you're one of those agents who are out buying lists and then texting people, if you're basically spamming them, you are legally putting yourself in a position to get in serious trouble. So you really need to request that you, it's okay. And that starts with a phone call. And then after that, if they say no, boom, forget it, right? 
FYI, be careful, be careful. And that's been part of the problem we have in some of our CRMs because the CRMs out there are not doing a very good job of monitoring this. And so as a result, we're getting in trouble or people are out overdoing it and the emails and, and so it hurts everybody in the CRM, FYI. If you've been in a CRM and I'm not gonna name names and everything got shut down, no email was going out, no texts were going out or something like that, it's because they did not have this in place. If you're in a CRM now where they have come to you and said, we have new rules and you have to now go and get permission from the people you've been texting all along. If you're in a CRM like that now, and by the way, I'm very aware that this has happened over the last couple months and very many people are upset because they are coming now back after the fact saying, you've got to do this. They should have done it to start with. And that's a problem. We do it. We're a permission-based system, but most of the time you have permission because they signed up somewhere or they asked you to send them stuff, right? Okay. Keep this in mind. So with your phone, you want to call the leads. They gave you the number. And I'd say something like this, it's Patty with ABC Realty. You just registered my list of homes in Scottsdale. How can I help you today? Open-ended question. So that's how it starts, right? Um, text the leads, very similar really. It's Patty, thanks for just registering for my list of homes in Scottsdale. This info is on its way to your inbox. I never put, I try not to put a link in the very first text I send. And the reason is, is because if I do that, including my website, they're, they may click away and not respond to me. So you got to be careful. So normally what I would do then is a five minutes later or 10 minutes later, I would set it up and say, oh, by the way, here's my link to my site, right? So just tips as you're doing this. If you want to take a screenshot of this, you can. Um, the key is, is that there's so much. You, I, I'm going to give you opportunities, by the way, to get better, get templates. So just so you know, because uh, I may be hearing from you saying, oh, I want your templates. I mean, tomorrow I'm going to talk about how you can get some of my stuff. But right now, I just want you to start thinking how important this content is, is going to be to you. Because if you can get a 50 to 60 to 70% response rate of your email or open rates even, isn't that better than 15 who won't open, 15% who open your mouth? So we're really trying to focus on getting that mail responded to, getting people talking to you. What are you going to say to get them to say something back so you can get a conversation started? It's that's simple as that, right? Okay, be sure you ask, what is your time frame for purchasing? Right? It doesn't need to be the first thing out of the shoot, but I definitely would like listen to their story, right? Make sure though at the end, this is going to tell you how hard you have to work for them. And then have you been out viewing homes or meeting agents? right? To list your home yet. Remember I said that earlier and then tell them what you're going to do next and then do it. Okay. That's really key because they're going to be sitting there waiting for it. And if you wait for three days to send it out, they're not going to think much of you. Right. And they've already lost interest or Joe agent over there has already done it and you've lost a chance. So don't promise something and then not send it really key. Make sure. Um, what they tell you in the first two questions, by the way, are going to tell you how hard you need to work for them. And then you can always plan your follow-up strategy around that. So your goal is to get a response and then figure out, all right, now what am I going to do? Well, if I have these campaigns stacked up in here, I have, top, I have three top of mind campaigns that I use in my system. And those are three month campaigns that are spread out based on the, what they told me. If they said, oh, I'm, I'm ready to go, well, then I won't use the top of my campaign. But if they tell me I'm six months out or nine months out, whatever, I would put in these campaigns based on how far out they're telling me. Because I don't want to send them an email every single day and say, how's it going? How's it going? How's it going? If they told me they're nine months out, right? So you've got to have the stuff set up and ready to go so that you can stay in touch with them. And at a minimum, you're just sending out, how's it going? You, you want to reset up your, you know, reset your um, search results or whatever it is. I mean, just there's stuff you can do.